Yo, what's going on everybody? AA Ryan here. Welcome back to Pan Nerdia. Welcome back to another Better Call Saw Season 5 breakdown. Tonight we're breaking down the finale, Episode 10 of Season 5, titled Something Unforgivable. Now, um, this title does get dropped at the end of the episode, but I think it kind of uh, surmises a couple plots this episode and this season as a whole. Um, so uh, it has a lot of meaning to it. All right, and uh, well, it definitely was a wild ride of a season. Um, last night's episode definitely ended on a good note. And uh, yeah, without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So we start where last episode ended. Uh, Lalo literally just left, and we see the perspective of uh, Kim and Jimmy as Kim looks out the peephole to see if he's gone. Jimmy's checking out the window, notices that he gets in Nacho's car and pieces out. Um, of course, they're scared out of their wits at this point, and, uh, you know, they want to get out. Um, not before uh, Jimmy tells Kim exactly what happened, because uh, he had just hung up the mic, uh, phone with Mike there, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, like, that was the guy who saved my life, and this is what happened, and gave her the whole rundown, and uh, first time she actually heard it out of his, out of his mouth, and, uh, you know, knew it was, it was true. At that point, they decided, like, look, we got to get the hell out of here. So they uh, hit up a real nice hotel um, and uh, hide out, so to speak. And uh, this is when it gets a little interesting. Their whole relationship this season has been um, very interesting, right? Because there's always been two sides of it. There's Kim, who's the orderly, you know, put-together figure. And you have Jimmy, Slippin' Jimmy, the chaotic type. And uh, he thought it was just a good balance based on the personalities, but now they're kind of blending together. The two worlds are, are uh, weaving in and out because you still have Jimmy turning Saul Goodman and going his route, um, but you have Kim kind of, you know, flooding over to his side too. But in the same sense, he's kind of reverting in certain instances because he's so worried about Kim. And... Uh, is trying to like talk sense into her when you know he's kind of the last one to do it um but really he's just scared and he kind of asks her he's like am i bad for you and she's like look um she's like you cross a lot of lines but ultimately it's going to be all right so um again you you want to feel for the situation because you're like oh man jimmy don't you know drag her into more but she's take you know swimming to the deep end herself right and uh she really um wants to prove to everybody this episode especially that these are her decisions and her choices all right they're not influenced by jimmy so we get gus at the burned down uh, pollo serranos um kind of looking at the damage assessing uh what assets he can uh, we get mike pulling up kind of letting him know uh that Lalo is south of the border, uh, a couple hours deep, and heading towards his uh, his home. And uh, well, there's a little bug though. Um, Nacho Varga is also along on the ride. So Mike, of course, is trying to be like, "Hey, let's let's get him out of here if we can." Uh, but Gus sees it as an opportunity, an opportunity to have a man on the inside uh, let the guys on the outside in because Gus has hired a a uh, hit squad to uh, assassinate Lalo at his hacienda late at late at night um, and finally rid themselves of the problem but with Nacho there he can actually be of help um, so uh, setting up something pretty crazy for this episode and uh, again putting Nacho in the middle man he just can't get out of the middle when he thinks he's almost there uh, he gets pulled down again, man, deeper into that quicksand. So, um, very, very curious to where uh, his story and Lalo's story uh, ends up uh, before, um, you know, the start of the Breaking Bad universe. But uh, speaking of uh, Lalo, we're at his uh, compound now. Um, his big house in the middle of nowhere um, with walls, uh, big iron door, and barbed wire fences. Uh, we get, you know, the look at one of his guards and how kind of lax they are as a unknown SUV pulls up 
and turns out just to be Lalo and Nacho. And uh, oh, they're excited. They come come through. You know, we get to see the whole uh, family or uh, you know group of people who help run his compound from uh, his cooks, who I'm sure are maybe like his aunt or something, to uh, his bodyguards, who are his friends and everything. But it's Lalo's crib, right? And uh, you know, introduces Nacho to him, and we get to see uh, where they they went, right? And a lot of it really does come down to what uh, Kim said to Nacho and or Lalo. I'm, I apologize, and what it made him um, realize that he really did need, uh, does need somebody on his side that he can trust. Um, and Nacho's the perfect guy. And well, they needed, you know, he needs to uh, introduce him to Don Eladio and uh, help this out. But first, hey, come over and check out my house. You know, you're a good friend. I'll introduce you to my people and uh, we'll be cool. So Jimmy's trying to keep Kim uh, to stay at the hotel because she's, you know, about to be going to uh, back to the courts for the day. He's trying everything from, you know, hey, if we can order some great, uh, you know, bed, bedside service food, we can go get a, a couple's massage. We can go check out the hot tub. You know, we pay for this place to get what we can out of it. But ultimately, it's because he's worried about her. He's scared. And uh, Kim realizes that, but she also wants to know, like, well, you know, do we do this for the next couple days, the next week, the next month? I mean, do we live in fear? Or do we move on with our lives, you know? And she's like, I, I gotta go. So she heads out. And then, of course, Jimmy's, like, freaking out, and he starts to call Mike because he's like, look, I need answers, man. I need to know what's going on. You need to fill me in on this stuff, okay? We get Kim down at the court. She's kind of looking for work. She's looking for something to keep her busy, um, especially now since she's left Mesa Verde um, and uh, Stryker and Coakley. She's doing all pro bono work now. So she ends up um, meeting this dude. He's, he's like the ultimate pro bono guy. He's got all cases from, you know, the petty uh, misdemeanors and everything to assaults to, um, you know, the heavier crimes. And uh, cases that so many cases that he's got a whole um, you know storage room rented in the in the courthouse that has you know all of his files. But um, I'm pretty sure she's doing this though because she she wants to kind of play in the dirt with uh, with Jimmy, just like he said at the end of season. What was that season three? When he didn't get the, uh, no, that was in the season four. Yeah, when he didn't get uh, the bar the first time. And uh, so, you know, she's uh, she's jumping in with him, right? Again, to the deep end. And uh, she wants to get her hand on these cases and, and help these people who would normally get really bad representation, you know, million dollar representation. Um, she thinks she'd really be doing something. Um, but as she's kind of mulling it over and she's back to the courthouse, she ends up running to Howard in the elevator. And this is when, uh, ultimately she like, you know, lets him know that she's not, you know, doing the Mesa Verde or Schweiker Coakley thing anymore. He wants to have a minute to talk though, cause he kind of thinks that's a little wacky. Um, turns out he goes to tell Kim about Jimmy's, uh, mishaps with the bowling balls and the prostitutes and uh, she proceeds just to laugh at him um, like that's it Howard that's really all you got and he's like look you know Jimmy need help, needs help and uh, it's pretty crazy that you're leaving uh, Mesa Verde and Sch uh, Schweiker so he's got to have something to do with that right and she takes it as a big uh, offense because you know uh, again she wants to stand on her own ground and be like this is my choice and it ultimately is. It really is. Uh, but uh, Howard, of course, ends on, on a last line because Kim says, "Like, look, I know Jimmy more than better than you, all right." And then he says, "Well, I think Chuck knew Jimmy better than than anybody," and uh, that speaks volumes uh, because ultimately, the way uh, Chuck viewed Jimmy was always slipping Jimmy. It will never change. It will always be the way he is. And, uh, you know, 
that's the true true Jimmy, the true Saul. Will he truly ever change? Um, of course, it probably it stirred around in Kim a little bit, but it also um, fired her up and uh, got some other um, wacky ideas stirring around her head. Ideas that honestly, perhaps, wouldn't have uh, came about if she wasn't hanging around with Saul. So we get Saul over at Mike's house, uh, trying to get some answers, knocking on the door, banging on the window. Mike's not home, obviously. And uh, he's just being obnoxious, like, knock, ding, knock, ding, knock, ding. And uh, finally Mike shows up, he's like, what the hell, man, get get inside, get inside. And uh, it's totally pissed at him, but he's like, what are you here? And Saul's like, I need answers, man. Like, ultimately, and, you know, Mike's just, I can't tell you anything, man. I really can't. And, uh, you know, with his classic face, poker face. But ultimately, it's because uh, Saul's worried about Kim. He really is. He's like, if anything happens to her, man. And Mike's like, look, okay. Now you listen, you listen good. Lalo, you're the last thing on Lalo's mind right now, all right? He's already in Mexico, and he's going to die tonight. Um, and it'll be finished before tomorrow morning. Uh, by this time, he'll be gone. And... Saul takes it. He's like, all right, because he trusts Mike. He knows Mike is, uh, he doesn't beat around the bush, right? He's either going to tell you something or he's not. Um, so uh, Saul takes it as it is. Then we get, uh, speaking of Mexico, we're back down there. We're at uh, Don Eladio's compound now. You guys obviously know where that's at if you're a Breaking Bad fan. They even have the classic um, filter on there. So when they're down, uh, at Don's, Don Eladio's. Uh, it's a classic, like, real bright yellow filter. But, uh, ultimately we get the other Don there bringing Gus's uh, money. It's a little shorter than usual. Still packaged real nice. Uh, but Don Eladio's, of course, a little upset. Uh, the other dude promises that, you know, uh, Gus won't have any other setbacks. And that's when uh, Lalo and Nacho show up. Lalo, of course, coming in and uh, stealing the show as usual, and uh, then letting Don Eladio know that he's uh, got something special for him. He ended up bringing him the uh, red car straight out of Magnum PI, uh, loaded with the frunk uh, full of uh, cash and a nice big yellow uh, uh, present. So he's a showman, according to Don Eladio. That's when he's uh, introduced to Nacho, and him and Nacho go to um, talk uh, business over some drinks. And uh, this is when Don Ladio ultimately wants to question Nacho and be like, look, you know, uh, what are you planning on doing with your side of the business? Uh, how are you gonna make money? And Nacho tells him, he's like, I'm gonna expand territories by um, uh, taking the territory away from the bikers. And, uh, you know, Don Laudio is already kind of pissed in a way. He's like, well, you're going to start a war. And that's when he convinces Don Laudio that, no, 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 they're already divided them amongst themselves. We can take one out at a time and turn them against each other. And he's like, all right, I like that. And he's like, so what do you want, though? And he's like, I want respect. I don't want, you know, to play any games. And I don't want to constantly be looking over my shoulder. And Laudio is just like, well, look, that's the business you're in, man. But uh, you know what? I like you, and uh, this will be good. So he passed the test, right? Uh, Lala wanted him down there to to meet the big boss, get the approval, um, so he can really trust somebody um, up north, and uh, you know, trust his men. Take he's taking Kim's advice here, um, but can he trust him? Obviously not. Uh, but he doesn't know that. So we get uh, Kim coming back to the hotel, uh, being like, really? Like, Lalo's, Lalo's gone? Jimmy, obviously, must have contacted her and uh, let her know that, yeah, he's gone. You can trust Mike uh, from what he said. He's really going to be gone. She's like, well, great. I mean, that's it then, right? And she's like, well, what's wrong? And he's just like, you know, that's it for this time. She's like, it's not going to happen again, right? And, uh... Which is interesting because, you know, obviously it might not be with the cartel, or it may be, but it kind of implies 
nothing bad's gonna happen again, right? But then they're about to delve pretty deep into something bad. Before that, though, they have some fun and have a proper honeymoon, I guess you could call it. Because, uh, you know, Saul's trying to get her to go home, but she's like, look, let's, let's take advantage of this stuff, just like he was saying earlier. So they do, they order a bunch of food, um, they really nice food, they chill out, and they're talking. And uh, Kim brings up the whole Howard thing, right? Starts laughing about it and gets Jimmy to start joking around with her about, um, you know, doing other things to get back at him, right? So they get to this whole scene about, you know, they can get rid of his hair or um, do something else to uh, ruin his reputation. But it goes from fun, right, to them getting a little more serious, especially Kim, about really taking Howard down. They had their their try at taking somebody down uh, this season, Kevin. But now since they had some practice, they want to take down somebody that they're closer to, somebody they can they really have some dirt on or can kick some dirt on, and that's Howard. And uh, they even think about like, look, if we can get Howard, we can also um, you know get him to budge on the sandpiper thing or have somebody else get him to settle. That's still getting up in the air. And remember, Jimmy gets 20% of, of what um, HHM gets. And uh, so he's looking at like somewhere around uh, $8 million. Or no, what was it? Like $2 million. So uh, they kind of start kicking up some little bits of a plan. Uh, but we're back at the compound. It's late at night. It's getting closer to that uh, that hour there. And we have Nacho in the kitchen um, making little tin foil strips of something that he's rolling up. And we'll see what that's used for in a little bit. But uh, as he's getting ready to head out and uh, essentially, um, you know, open the door for the uninvited guests, um, as he sneaks out all sweatily, he sees that Lalo's already out there having a drink by the fire and has asks him to come join him and lets him know, like, look, man. Uh, you know, you did good today, and uh, it's kind of a, an awkward, intense scene, even though they're just sitting there chilling. But uh, then uh, Nacho uh, thinks of a way to kind of, you know, get away from Lalo for the moment and think of a new plan. You know, uh, you got anything stronger to drink? Lalo sends him inside as he goes in. He, uh, on his feet, really thinks of a good plan. Puts a bunch of oil in a pan and, and uh, turns the stove on real hot so it starts smoking. He heads back out with the drink like all cool and collected, have a few. And then uh, when Lalo realizes that it's smoking in his house, he runs in and uh, Nacho runs out. He actually uses those tinfoil strips to pop open the padlock on the on the uh, iron gate door and uh, lets the assassins in as he escapes. We're not sure where, where he goes, but we don't see him for the rest of the episode at this point. Um, but we do get Lalo back in the kitchen, freaking out, blaming it on the younger bodyguard, or uh, compound guard. And then uh, when he's doing that, that's when they come inside and they end up popping the guard, actually hitting Lalo in the leg too. He goes down, hides from him, gets up, takes the bubbling pan of oil, uh, scorching hot, and throws it on one of the assassins. Uh, ducks down again, is able to uh, escape the kitchen, runs into one of his personal compound guards, takes a pistol, because that guy uh, is already dead, uh, runs out, runs into his bathroom where he's got a secret escape uh, latch where he like, pulls the towel hanger and twists it and his whole bathtub comes up. He's got an underground escape tunnel, of course, uh, in case of one of these instances. You would think, though, that if he has this kind of escape tunnel, he would have either been walking around with a gun or had guns hidden around the house in several places, right? Either way, um, really awesome shot as, as Lalo jumps through the tunnel and starts crawling super fast. They do a great shot where he's far away in the tunnel and he starts running really fast towards the viewer and then the camera catches up with him and, and he keeps running through the tunnel or crawling through it. It's really awesome. He decides to actually leave the bathtub uh, latch open. He was going to close it, but he decided to leave it open because he gets out, he escapes, he circles back into his house, comes up on the dudes, 
um, when they find the bathtub, pops the one guy and kills him while the other two are already down there crawling, takes the dude's machine gun, hangs down inside there, and starts popping them, uh, shooting them uh, as they're crawling away. And it's pretty brutal, um, but hey, they broke into his house. And uh, let's not forget, um, he did it all himself and with no help. Um, all of his bodyguards or his uh, compound guards are done for, and uh, Nacho is nowhere to be found. So finally we get uh, Jimmy and Kim uh, kind of settling in and ending their honeymoon with some ice cream buffet. Uh, actually up in their place, they gotta, must have got a wheel up there. That's funny though, Jimmy says, I want everything, just no mint chocolate chip. If you guys remember that from earlier in the season. Uh, but uh, they kind of start discussing a little bit more. Oh, Jimmy's like, look man, look Kim, we really can't do this. Like, I, I know that we would be the, the people to do it, but we can't, you know, we can't go down that bad road essentially. And uh, this is when, um, you know, cause he even tells her like, look, it's, it's not you to be doing this. And she's like, look, I gotta go take a shower. And uh, he's like, well, you're shitting me, right? And she turns around and gives him the classic, it's all good man guns. And she, uh, you know, he's like, really? She doesn't say it's all good man, but it's basically like her saying it. And basically like, um, you know, the writer's letting us know that she's on Saul Goodman, Goodman's side now. And uh, she jumped in fully into the deep end with him. And uh, she's in the game, so to speak. But definitely a, a cute scene. And now we know uh, where uh, next season's headed, at least with the lawyer side of this. Because even he said uh, to Kim in that scene, look, um, you know, Howard would have to do something unforgivable to be put out of, uh, out of being a lawyer. And uh, hence the name of the, ti of the, uh, the title. But... Um, Kim's just like, yeah, well, let's do it then. So not only does it relate to uh, Jim uh, or uh, Jimmy and Kim, it also relates to the cartel side because as Lalo, you know, is uh, getting the last questions out of the grease burned guy, he's still alive. He finds out the guy's a, uh, a middle, uh, there was a middleman. He's like, don't worry, I already know who did it thinking you know it's got to be Gus and uh, seeing that Nacho has gone I'm thinking he's starting to click that Nacho might have something to do with it as well and uh, in Lalo's mind that's something unforgivable too at least that's how I took it so uh, we get at the last final scene of season five with Lalo uh, storming off of his compound no smiles though all anger real intense anger so uh, he's got some scores to settle here next season um, and it's definitely going to be the the wild card in the grand scheme of things of um, you know Saul and Kim taking down Howard and uh, Lalo coming to get revenge on Gus and anybody else in Albuquerque I would, I would say either way very very uh good season an amazing season probably or it definitely was the best better call Saul season some of the best better call Saul episodes this season i uh, love the finale i'm really excited to see the uh the uh final season season six uh, not only get answers on what happens to kim what happens to nacho what happens to lalo but uh, ultimately what happens to jimmy aka Saul, aka gene and the future scenes um, or up in North Dakota at the Cinnabon. Um, so let me know what you guys thought about the finale um, down in the comments. If you enjoyed the review and breakdown of Better Call Saul Season 5, uh, let me know with a like and a, and a sub. And, uh, well, I'll come back next year and jump on with another Better Call Saul uh, breakdown. I uh, really appreciate all you guys. Uh, hanging with me and uh hope you enjoyed um would say see you next week but i'll see you soon enough take it easy be safe and i'll check you later peace out guys